Both gripped the sword and hid in the barn. This was it. From now on, she had to defend herself. There was no room for failure. Which made her race even faster. Only she couldn't let her heartbeat or breath be noticed. Then the door to the barn opened and a man with a sword entered. He looked around the farm equipment. The man knew she was here. She could feel it. There was only one way out. She had to fight him head on. But he was bigger, stronger and faster. Brute force wouldn't cut it. She, however, had two advantages. He didn't exactly know where she was, and she was a lot smaller, making making her leave her hiding spot easy. Knowing that she had to distract him, that he stepped out of her hiding space, she raised her sword and tried to slash the man from behind. Without turning around, did he grab behind himself and grab the sword. Then he spun around and slashed her at the waist level. The sword moved as if her body wasn't in the way. She could feel the blade every step of the way. But that was part of her plan. She used herself as a distraction to create a copy. The copy instantly attacked the man, not giving him the time to see which was the original and which the copy. Expecting the original to be attacking him, he disarmed her with ease. He pointed his sword at her chest, just enough to leave a temporary mark. He was surprised as the girl in front of him just vanished, realizing that he cut the original in half. He turned around. She tried to attack him again. But without her legs, where her movements were too limited, he kicked his sword out her hand and kneeled down. He lifted her rose's chin to look in the eyes. That's enough. You still have to at least shower if you don't want to take a bath. So stop resisting. As will be late for your first day at school, the man said. And lifted her upper half up. He then grabbed one of her legs and shut both halves to pull the house. Rose's mother was already waiting with a filled bathtub. The mother grabbed her legs and the father placed the upper half back where it belongs, letting both the halves reconnect. With that, he left the bar and closed the door, making sure she couldn't run away anymore. With that, he went out, still hearing the protest of his daughter. I hope you won't make so much trouble in the future, he said to his son, who was playing in the backyard. Once the voices quieted down, did the two re-enter the house. Now, go before she finds a way to get dirty again, the mother said and handed her off to her father. Just a moment, I have to get ready as well. He sat and walked into the bar, only to get out a second later, having her shirt and pants switched with a properly fitting suit. Amni smiled. <coughs> and kissed both them on the cheek. Have a great day, first day, honey. She said to her daughter, and with that, the two left the house. Rose wondered how they would reach the capital in time. She knew that it normally took two to three days to do it on horse, and they only had two hours left till the ceremony began. It's been a while, her father said, as he revealed a piece of metal. She had seen the thing on pictures of her parents' honeymoon. Still, she wasn't sure what to expect. The father sat her down on it, then he sat down on the seat. He made sure that she wasn't going to just fall off. As he started the engine, scaring the girl for a brief second. Then he switched into the first gear, slowly making his way to the top gear. 
the trees just flew past them, which filled her with more amazement than the fear for her new school. Then she could finally see the walls of the capital, the place she would call home while she was in school. Father went off the road and used the ram to lift up into the air, letting them fly past the city walls. He then drove across the rooftops, hers held as tight as possible. She kept her eyes closed till the engine went out. She looked around and saw a lot of parents, kids in her age. Just in time. One of the mothers said, as Rose's father helped her down. Then the crowd parted. The queen started to walk past the parents. She kept her own son right behind herself to make sure that no one would get too close to a precious angel. Then she noticed Rose under her dignity and ran towards her. The queen lifted the little girl up. Oh, Lord, you have gone. Then she kissed on the cheek, still as sweet as a sea. With that, she let the girl down. Rose blushed a bit. She knew the queen, but she wasn't sure why she lifted her up. You know, I changed my mind. I miss you breaking into the phone room, the queen said towards his father. He smiled at her. Well, I'll come around more often, he answered as he looked at his daughter. With that, the headmistress of the school came out and greeted all of the parents. Now, there has been a long tradition of courage in the old academy. However, ours will be a bit more quicker. So, if you have any parting gifts for your children, now is the time to get them. As from this point onwards, they will have to prove themselves. With that, was the father in the town and placed a red hood on her. If you are ever scared and think you are alone, use this spell, he said, and then whispered her short chant into the ear. The queen leaned over to us, after she gave her son a lucky charm. Can you keep an eye on him, for me, my little red hood? The queen asked and was nodded. She grabbed the hand of the young prince and pulled him away from his mother, and with that, the two reached the other children. Now to the rules. All the kids have to do is get up these stairs and step into the building. The headmistress sat and stepped to the side, along a better view into the entrance hall of the school. And so the children started to step onto the staircase. But they all slowed down. Not one made it far the way up. The parents watched in silent turn. As the children met their first resistance, Rose could feel the doubts in herself build up. She couldn't step forward. Maybe she wasn't made to be a student at the Central Academy. Then I was fed to him. She focused and remembered the spell her father taught her. Perry, no. In just for a moment, her doubts vanished. She could see the school clearly. Then her doubts came back. But she knew that she wasn't that far away. She made one more step. Prince Ian saw the step the girl in front of him did. For the first time, he hadn't had his mother in front of him to protect him. But that was okay. His mother and father taught him that you don't need to be the one that was the first step if you can have toes that did it. With that, he stretched his arms out. He pushed himself just far enough to touch her back. From then on, he had something to hold on to. He then softly pushed the girl forward. Rose felt a pair of hands on her back, pushing her forward, giving her the strength to make another one. Ian ignored his own need to step forward and push the girl further. And so they gave each other the focus and push through the illusion that clouded the staircase and made it to the top. 
the headmistress then look to the two children. Ross, Ian, you two have proven to be worthy of entering the school. With that, she knelt down and handed each a badge. Just don't cause as much troubles. Ask your parents. She said, with that, the mistress taking the spell on the stairs to let the other kids make progress. With that adjustment, did all the kids make it? The mistress gave each of them a badge. The kids all looked to their parents before vanishing into the building. As the last one entered the school, did the mistress close the doors? Well, I would be happy to see you all and the parents that couldn't come again, the mistress said, and also vanished into the building. So, do you want to go drink a coffee? The queen asked. Lucas looked at the school. Sure, but do you have enough time? Alicia laughed at the question. I wouldn't trust my advisors to do their job properly. I wouldn't have chosen them. You should know that, considering how much you did during the build-up of the capital. Hmm. So, Sophia is the headmistress. Can you live with that loss? He asked Alicia after she got the coffee. Yeah, she wanted to work with the school, and you just vanished when it was time to let the head of the school. Lucas took his coffee out. Yeah, we will have to talk about it sometime in the future. He sat and stood up, but Alicia managed to run after him. Why are you running? She asked, fully out of breath. Well, we can't just talk about everything in public, he said, and returned to the city. Since when? You threatened to cut my head off without hesitation on the first day we met. You killed nobles in broad daylight. And not to forget your involvement during the demon swan, which I still find a stupid title. Because the Vegeta. Okay. I named it because of the whole a good man goes to war thing. But that's the thing. It's not over. That's why I have planned to leave. Alicia grabbed him. You can't just leave. How is that solving anything? Lucas freed himself. Demons won't happen because I didn't finish what I started back then. It will take some time, but I will get it right this time around. He assured her with a hurt smile. Just remember, you aren't alone. There's always the dent you left in the phone room, waiting for you to crash into it again. Rose and Ian were kind of mistress. So, are you kids excited? She asked. None of the kids said anything, as they were overwhelmed by the new surroundings. Then Sophie turned around. This is where we'll have to split up. To the right is the girls' door, and to the left the boys. And with that, the group split up, except for Rose and Ian. Do you want to be in the same room? Sophia asked. Ian and Rose nodded. Then, how can I help you two? Then Rosa took up a picture and looked from it to Sophia. Ian looked also at the picture and back before Sophia grabbed it. I do look gorgeous in that picture, she commented before giving it back. So, Redwood and the little prince, you want to know if I know your parents? Oh, not. Of course I do, but you're a bit too young for the kind of gossip I could give you. Now, let's go and search for your rooms. I'll come and get you for dinner when it's time. And with that, the two run into their respective dorms. So, the time at the Central Academy started. Ian devoted my interest in the library, while Rose quickly managed to ace every kind of sport event that came her way. Still, she was Still, she always did her best to drag Ian along. After the first two years, 
was a time for the first thought of a school term. For such reasons, did I have to spread into teams of three with a guardian student. You must be the legendary Fatot. A girl whispered, but she need found rose and followed her. I am Mesh, and will be responsible for you and Ian, she said as she let Rose go. No? Are you ready for the little adventure? She... Mesh said with much excitement.